Today's topic, celebrity plastic surgeries. Who got it right? Who got it wrong? So please continue listening to Plastic Surgery Uncensored. Welcome to a new episode. Thank, we want to thank the listeners for their reviews and comments. Now, first of all, this is somebody who wrote specifically, I'm a good listener and not too easy on giving praise, but listening in here, I feel informed and love the tone with intelligent styling. Thank you for taking the time to speak and not only to perform. I think that's going to go to you, that's Roddy. Lovely. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I actually didn't even know there was a section where people were writing comments. Thank God they're all positive. I would oh, have yeah. been devastated if they were negative. You, we you, really appreciate that. You're getting like five-star reviews, my man. All right, I love it. Yeah, Bible-loving Amanda. You got to love that. So that means she's straight up. This podcast is informative and detailed. It gives you a great starting point and tips if you're interested in plastic surgery. Dr. Raban is honest and real and doesn't hold back. That's pretty legit. So. I like that. That's very good. You know, it makes you, it, you know, when you do something like this, it's nice to see that people receive you the way you had intended. So that's really lovely. I think that for the future, though, if she's listening, we could maybe cut on the curse words. He gets really rolling. So. Uh, <laughs> don't get me started. Okay. Well, we have a guest. She's going to get you started. This is my friend and our guest who's in to chime in on celebrity plastic surgery, Hollywood insider and TV presenter, Marissa Montgomery. Great. Great to have you. Thank you for having me. Excited to be here. Of course. So I think one of the things that's really, without a doubt, unarguably, probably one of the hottest topics regarding plastic surgery is celebrity plastic surgery because it like kind of morphs the two things you love. You love celebrities and people love plastic surgery and they love to see what celebrities did, whether that's because you see them as icons or whether you dislike them or whatever the case may be. So it's not like this is new. I no. mean, since a, since the beginning of time, if you were a celeb, Cleopatra was a celebrity, right? Let's Correct. be honest. So anyone who's a celebrity or in the public eye has a higher threshold or need to look good. Everybody wants to look good, but they're going to look, want to need, or they're going to want and need to look good more than other people. And so recently we've had a few celebrities because historically you just deny it right right oh you look great have you done anything yeah i mean it's that is one of the biggest issues i think people have been denying it for years right. but now people are kind of outspoken about it it's interesting it's a different thing and there's this whole niche of like celebrity plastic surgeons like people are proud i find it's a really interesting time it's changed a lot and yeah. i think a lot of that and we'll get to that is how why is that the case so we have a few people like um, who are the people that recently came out? One was well, Sharon uh, Osbourne. Sharon Osbourne. She just Osborne announced said, the fourth facelift. Yeah, Sharon Osbourne. And what, was he, what was he? And there was another one that had said that. Well, we all know, like for example, um, uh, Cardi B said that she had to stop her 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 tour due to like having gone back to her tour too early, et cetera. So I think the key today is we're gonna what we're gonna talk about is we're gonna talk about those who got it right, meaning that the tr plastic surgery they had done worked, and in terms of making them better, those that. It didn't work and they look worse. And then I think there'll be a handful of people where we'll have what we refer to as honorable mention, where like it got better, maybe some of it got worse, and we can kind of tackle it. And I'll give you my input, you can give me yours, and we'll kind of figure it out from there. Can I have a can I suggest a subset? Sure. I think as she was saying, there's almost a status to it now where the younger people and the millennials, they're kind of bragging about it and they're getting it younger and younger. And there's almost a status to like, I'm already you know, wealthy enough to start spending tons of money on my face. And they're not, there was a generation where it was like taboo, yeah. but I think the younger generation, it's status now. So we'll get into the, all those things. So I think what we will do is we're going to get started with those that got it wrong. Okay. Because at the end of the day, let's be honest, we just all love to watch train wrecks and we, I don't know, there's something about like celebrities are so perfect or they behave so perfect and it's kind of like, oh, well, you're not so perfect. So Well, sure, it's like NASCAR. Everybody watches for the wheel to fly off. So right. let's talk about <laughs> whose wheels flew off. <laughs> okay, so who's our first Who's our first person we're going to go to? We're well, going to pull, you know, for those of you who are sitting at home, we're going to mention the person. You pull them up on your computer. We're looking at some images and we're going to kind of start dissecting this together. So go ahead. Let's. Who's, who's so going to be our first victim? Okay, so who got it wrong? We have on the list, and this was agreed upon by the group, Lil Kim is first. First, I, I'm not sure why we think she got it wrong. What did she get wrong? Well, Dr. we got to pull up her pictures. So, and you said you're not sure. You're not sure. What she got wrong. Okay. Have you looked at her photo? I'm just going to ask you. I mean, I'm going to tell you what she had wrong, what she did wrong. But do you think that, did she, okay, take a look at that. Everyone look at that. Well, I mean, she's, look, at the end of the day, if you're comparing her to old Lil' Kim, she, well, does, she doesn't look like Lil' Kim. No, no. We have two issues and let's be very distinct. Okay. Be distinct. One, one is... Everyone who has plastic surgery, there's this notion that I'm going to do plastic surgery. I'm going to look just like myself, but better. That's nonsense. 
you're getting plastic surgery to look different. Your goal is that you look different and you look better. But you so still the look fact like that, you. Well, that's arguable because that's a relative term. But like the, con the concept is I had plastic surgery and I'm unarguably to the general, you know, everyone's got their taste. But generally speaking, I look better. That's our litmus test, okay? You looking different, everyone looks different, okay? So when I look at her, you guys have looked at her? Yeah. Okay, so what do you think? Do you think she looks better? I feel like it's the Michael Jackson effect. Okay, it's so the Michael scary. Jackson effect is a great term. And to me, when I look at her, I think most lay people, if we were walking in the street and we, we, we showed her picture, I think most people are like, wow, she looks different, but Completely. she doesn't look better. And so what makes her not look better? So let's go through it one by one. Okay. One of the issues, and this is great segues, is ethnic, ethnic plastic surgery. So because we're in a world now where... There's ethnic celebrities. We have Indian celebrities. We have Asian celebrities. We have a lot of African American celebrities, et cetera, which we didn't have before. Now they're uh, they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna they've Feel always the pressure. Listen, plastic surgery, ethnic plastic surgery has always been towards Caucasian, making yourself more Caucasian. That's good. That's wrong. That's right. It is eyelids make making eyelid Caucasian eyelids, noses making them more more refined, jawlines, et cetera. So what little Kim has done is, as she said, the plastic the michael jackson effect is let's go through things one by one number one her nose is half the size it was before agreed agreed so when you have a beautiful full face like little kim does and it's large and big cheeks because she's got a round african-american face mm -hmm. and then you go and get your nose made in half in and of itself you could look at her nose and be like well it doesn't look that it, it's skeletonized and michael jackson did the same thing so you can't tell me that her that right there her nose doesn't look ridiculous it doesn't look like her old nose. To me, it looks... What Do you think it looks good? It, it's There's been so much done that it's like the cheek filler, the chin filler, the eyes. It's, it, there's okay. so much to take in that it's almost like a visual overload. I can't even process I, it. I, I think... <laughs> I can't even well, I think, I, I think to me, her nose is overdone. I agree. Because listen, at the end of the day, it's a matter of discussion, right? Everyone's about taste. Like you taste this and I taste this and she tastes this and we all decide, does this taste good or not? Maybe we have different taste buds. But I think that her nose is overdone. The, the nostrils are taken in, the middle of it is skeletonized, her tip is tiny. Those are all signs that your nose has been done, period. Of course. But but what I'm saying is when I look at that picture, the after isn't ugly. I For mean, me, there's it's ugly. People she looks like a cat. Her eyes, are, her eyes are tiny. Her cheeks are ginormous. Her nose looks like a little beady little nose. I just don't think that in this, and we're looking at this photo, but this effect, which represents a lot of people, this sort of cat-like effect. People always, the cat woman. No, you're why, right. Why do people start Bilden looking like a cat? Look. What happens is, it's very classic. Your nose keeps getting smaller. Nobody goes and gets a plastic surgery and their nose gets bigger. The question is, how small? Your cheeks keep, your cheeks keep getting bigger. So don't you can't argue that her cheeks are not so is that, she Is that filler yes. and an eye lift? Or no, what is, it's, what's it's, the it's, eye thing? The eye thing is- What's the eye what, thing? <laughs> well, you mean, why do her eyes look so tiny? Yes. Okay, first of all, she's kind of semi-squinting. Okay. But what the issue is that her cheeks are getting larger and larger and larger, and they're starting to encroach on her lower eyelid. So if you look at a cat, you look at them really closely, you're going to notice they have small eyes and ginormous cheekbones. And the distance between their eyelid and their cheek point is really close so a human if you look at my eyelash and the highest point of my cheek there's like maybe two two in two centimeters as my cheek starts to get bigger and my cheek gets closer towards my lower eyelid the space gets less and you start looking a little cat-like your eyes start getting reduced in so it's like inside. face real estate like she had to give up some beachfront for the cheeks like there, there's only so much space well okay well, all right fine so we we both think Let's move on to another celebrity. Okay. okay. Now, I think we can all agree that, you know, when you say Kim Kardashian got it right, got it wrong, that's really a matter of opinion because her brand is that big Armenian tukus. Well, I mean, that's the brand. The brand okay. is the tukus. So, so let's start with what she had done, <laughs> right? Let's start with what she had done, and then let's talk about whether okay. or not we think it's I've good I've never seen it in person. Have you ever seen her butt in person? Yes. And, okay, so let's talk to somebody who's actually seen the Tukas. I, you know, I also thought she was so beautiful in person. Like her skin was beautiful. I was taken back by how beautiful she was. But obviously, I couldn't stop staring at her bottom. But is it um, is it out of proportion you know, I, in I, person? It is very big. But then you know, women come in all shapes and sizes. But that I was she know, didn't come that way I though. I've never <laughs> met her before. You know, I, I so it's very hard. So to well, let's let's first start out and let's describe first and foremost. I'm a plastic surgeon. Yeah. So I make a living. Dr. And Roddy Rabon, board certified. Yeah, <laughs> I, I make a living by making transformations occur. So the argument is not whether or not one should or shouldn't. 
And the argument is not whether or not this is a bad idea or a good idea. The argument is we're just discussing what was done right. and whether or not we as a group, and none of us are, no, there's no such thing as an expert because at the end of the day, even me as a plastic surgeon, is just my opinion. Mm -hmm. What did she do what did, How do you what, get it like that? Whether or not we think that the overall effect of it was a positive one. So what did she have done? She yeah. had her nose done, which I think looks excellent. Over the years, she's had cheek filler increasingly, which I think at some point looked really good. And I think as time went on, aged her. That's a matter of discussion. She does look older. Like more mature. And I don't know if that was her look or not, but as you get fuller cheeked, you kind of she looked kind of older. And I think overall, I think it's unarguable that her face in general is beautiful and it looks great. The argument that's been had is regarding this whole idea of being snatched and this whole big booty concepts and fat transfer to the butt and then and then... Uh, Mickey, uh, uh, what's her car? What's her called? Cardi B and all these people. So there's no question that having a a larger, uh, being curvy is now fully accepted and desired. We went from the '90s of being skinny and rail thin, yeah, to now being curvy is the new desired look. So I don't think that's the issue, but I do know for, I mean, that's not her butt. But ha but my question is because I know there's butt implants. Like Coco T has butt implants. But what? How do you get a butt okay, like so that? I'm I curious. Listen, I obviously don't know, right? Because I didn't do her surgery. But my suspicion, just watching the evolution of her photos, is I think what she probably did was that she probably did butt implants at some juncture, which took her from her regular normal curviness, which is quite decent, to like bigger butt. Okay. And then when fat transfer became very popular, so-called Brazilian butt lift, she then took more fat from around her waist and then added it on top of around the, where the implant was. To the point now that if you look at her photos on the beach, you can tell that her, I mean, again, matter of taste, but you have skinny little legs and then all of a sudden you got a big, it's, really it's, large yeah, butt. Yeah. So any rate, I think that the issue really is at hand is whether or not you like it or not. It's also the idea that now this became the, the trend. norm. Yeah. That's and the what, part that concerns so, me. So, so the part that concerns me is like, well, I don't know if it was a three, few days ago, yet another woman died in Miami. This is like the 24th, some crazy number of women dying. And they're dying from what? Fat transfer to the butt. Why? Because they're getting fat emboli. Why? Because they're going to these clinics, desperately wanting this look. Their doctors or whatever they are, dentists or whoever these people are, are injecting fat, not skillfully, not appropriately, and they're dying. So the, what's a fat emboli? Maybe for those the layman, people that don't know, how does that? Cause, okay, so you know what you know what a, you know what a blood clot to the lungs correct, is, right? Correct. So everybody, you know, you get on an airplane, you wake up, you, you get out of the plane, you walk, and you drop dead. It's because blood from your legs clot went straight from your leg and lodged into your lungs or your heart, and you died. Okay. Now the same phenomenon occurs, except the thing that goes from your to your heart and lungs is a big clot, a big chunk of fat. Well, you got so, injected wrong? So you got injected. Wow. And when they're injecting all that fat in your butt, it goes too deep into the muscle and where there's a lot of vessels, big veins, like channels, and then the fat goes straight into one of those and goes whoop, and straight to the lungs and the heart and you drop dead and die. It, it's not rare. It's not uncommon. It's happening everywhere to the point that there's an advisory board. Certain countries have banned it. I mean, it's a big issue in plastic surgery. The issue is what's driving this phenomenon? Why are women, some of which have great looking bodies, young, 23, 24, moms of three or four, what, so it's, the, it's this desire to look a certain way. See, I blame, I do blame Kim Kardashian and sort of this, uh, this for lack of a better term, it, it's like the, the baller lifestyle. Everybody wants to look like a video vixen. Like some people just don't have big butts. I mean, it's because butts are fat. So it's it's unnatural to think you're going to have a thin rest of the body and a giant butt. Like well, I used to have a dangerous when I was young. They used to call me culona because I had a dangerous minority butt, and then I lost weight, and now I look like a middle aged white woman with good credit. Like I lost. Yeah, I I, I I agree. So like I lost for, my butt. So it's I fat. Th I think the idea is it's it's no different than when we wanted bigger boobs in the '90s, right? Right. There was a whole trend, Pamela Anderson. So the trends are never going to go away. In ten years, we'll be sitting here, God willing, and having a conversation about a different trend. The issue at hand is not should you or shouldn't you. The issue is to what degree and at what cost. And the next issue is who are the influencers that are driving these forces and how authentic are they about getting this information out there? So, for example, you're you do you you're in the world of influencing, and what that does that mean, and what responsibility do you have? Yeah. And like Kim was on the Med Med Gala carpet, right? You saw that, right? Mm -hmm. And I commented about that. That's not even her, 
What she looks like, which is already not the way she looks, that was even 10 times more exaggerated because she wore a corset and then they put these these pads on your thighs mm-hmm. to make you look, and that's fine. I will also, whoever's making the dress for her, I can't remember who dressed her, they know that is going to make front page and sell. The more you accentuate, of you know, course. it's... So the question is, if you come out and say, hey, I just think this looks so cool. I put on this corset and I put on these pads. And so so a young girl who's like 20, 20 years old. Really, they're 16 years old. Six- Her Instagram follows. It's so scary. What is normal now? It's like an unachievable beauty. You know, Correct. like the amount of money and not just plastic surgery, but training and everything else to just look a certain way. It is unachievable for young girls who are 16 years old. You hit it. So here is the underbelly of the podcast. So all the dialogue is interesting, it's fun, it's interesting banter, but that gets to the core. The core is when I'm sitting in my office and I have a 18 year old girl come in and ask for a facelift or a 20 year old girl coming in for asking for fat transfer to her butt or all these things, that's the the issue. The issue isn't plastic surgery. The issue is 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 the manipulation of what you're trying to achieve. If what you're trying to achieve is reasonable and accept, like within reach, okay, so fine. Yeah. When but I it, yeah, when I grew up, I wanted to look like Rachel from Friends. I went to the hairdressers, I got the Rachel haircut. That was it, and you would get like a handbag or a t-shirt to look like that celebrity. But that was because you know you would get like your monthly magazines or you would read it. Now every day, the first thing these kids they wake up and they're bombarded through Instagram, social media. And it is not just that. It is like, it is a very unrealistic kind so, of- So it's unrealistic because of why. I, for the first time, finally got to see Facetune. I saw it. My niece, who's 16, who is literally the epitome of this whole thing we're talking about. Yeah. She took a picture of my wife, who's a supermodel in my opinion, and very made pretty. and took her waist in and brought her hips out. And it was like insane how quickly, how- like perfect it looked. And I was like, this is it. So it's one thing to have a picture of Rachel, who's a real human being walking around with a certain haircut. And I don't think there's anything wrong with saying Rachel looks really pretty. She's my celebrity crush. I want to look like And that was the trend. It was just the hair, you know, but now it's so different. I don't know if plastic surgery is just so much more visible, but it's, it's the look that people are. No, it's what it is, is Rachel has a haircut. You Mm -hmm. go get that haircut. Now you're seeing pictures of people who don't look like the picture and you're trying to get that thing. Yeah. So it's one thing if people like, I don't know, you can't get something that doesn't exist. And the problem is no one looks the way that they're, the images you're, so it doesn't matter that we went from magazines to Instagram. It's just another source of images. Yes. A magazine came out once a month. Images come out once a second. Mm -hmm. It's the fact that the image that you're looking at is fake. But yeah. that heightens the competition, speed of exposure, speed of visibility. Once a month, kind of slowed it down. Oh, for the sure. The speed raises the pressure to change it faster. So let's look at another celebrity. So the next celebrity we're looking at is I don't know how many people uh, know uh, um, Mickey. Of Mickey course, Rourke. he's in the uh, Iron Man movies. Okay, I mean- so so Mickey Rourke represents another sub population. It's, it's a little more mature, and men. Because there's this, like, in a weird way, and this is going to be, it's not sexist. It, women, even if they look weird, still kind of look prettyish, Because our expectation for women, there's like, they're very doll-like or very sort of refined. And, and there's arguments, like, we were, you were arguing about whether or not you thought Lil' Kim looked good, right? Well, but she's not being, ugly. No, understandable. Mm-hmm. But, that, but the point being is, even though she doesn't look really like herself and maybe a little doll-like... It's still arguable if she's pretty. Men don't have that. That men, men are either like they're handsome and they're rugged, or they look feminized and weird. I was just gonna say though, a male facelift is almost always feminizing. So let Min, Mickey work. What Paul did he, McCartney looked what, like somebody's grandma. So what did he do? You, you want? I want you to look and you tell me what you think. What Mickey didn't Rourke. he do? When I saw the movie The Wrestler, I said that his face was his co-star, <laughs> <laughs> like it was Mickey Rourke starring, and his face was like supporting. So what do you what do you think? What do I think he's had done? First of all, first of all, let's start with the basic. Do you think whatever he's done, which clearly isn't just age, does he look better in your opinion? No. Okay. I mean, it is very hard to age gracefully. And well, we're going to get to that because that's our topic of like, yeah. okay, so we have all these tools. What do we do with them? But just in your opinion, because people are out there listening because they want, like people look at him on the TV and they're like, what the hell did he do? Why? why? He's so, almost unrecognizable. So, what is, so we've agreed that 
we're not here to bash Mickey R Rourke. We're, yeah. we're, we're, not, not at all. We're just here to talk about what we see and give our thoughts. Because the goal is to prevent other people from doing things and have this dialogue now. So we don't. We all agree that it doesn't necessarily look significantly better. And we're going to talk about at the next segment all the people that did do plastic surgery and look great. What do you think he did? What, what is it that looks different about him? What don't you? What looks weird to you? I think the mouth actually looks really strange. Funny you should say that because his he had a smirk that was quite sexy. And those poofed up lips make him look like he took a wrong turn on his way to a bar mitzvah. Like he looks very <laughs> matronly. He, he looks so very the lips, matronly what else? Miami. The lips. I don't know. The ch the cheek. Something here. He looks like he like his face. His forehead doesn't look significantly bigger. It just looks smooth and weird. Like you could show a movie on it. Yeah. What is that look when I always see these girls in LA and their forehead is just so shiny? Okay, so that's that's a Botox aftermath so we'll okay. talk about that in a second but i'm so, english we don't do that much in england so here we go so <laughs> as far as what i see is okay so what did he have done he, almost always facial rejuvenation so you become 58 62 70 we all classically age the same in different amounts everyone's brows start to start sagging some more some less everyone starts to generate a little bit of extra skin in their upper eyelids almost everyone starts to have some fat bulging under their eyes and almost everyone starts to develop jowls, neck skin, and marionettes. That's how we all age. Some more, some less, some more in their cheeks, some less, depending on your structure. So when you do facial rejuvenation, you usually do a combination of all those things. You get a brow lift. So he's had a brow lift. That's why his eyebrows, one of the quintessential elements about most handsome men is that they have straight eyebrows. You never see a man with an arching eyebrow. Mm -hmm. Oh, so I didn't when, even think of that. So when they age, their eyebrows drop faster than a woman whose brows are arching. So when you go do a brow lift, you run the risk of overly arching a brow. And that's number one issue. So you see his brows are up high? Yeah. Look at his brow before. So when you're doing low. a brow lift, are you literally like taking the skin? And you like... literally do a facelift of the brow. You cut and lift the brow. So you're up. cutting on the hairline. Usually and the then hairline. You're pulling and, it back. Right, and so Ooh. you know, as so, <laughs> well, so that's issue number one. So that's the fastest way to feminize okay. someone. The second thing is men have much less eyelid show. So if you look at an average female where they put on blood what, what is the thing you put eyeshadow. up here eyeshadow you have a lot of eyeshadow space look at my eyeshadow space not that much mm -hmm. no. so when you do a eyelid surgery forget about the brow no eyelid surgery you end up opening the eyes up excessively look at how much space he has underneath in his eye upper eyelid mm -hmm. that's the kenny roger ish effect right yeah the second thing the next thing you do is you want to lift up the cheek and mid face to clear up the neck. And what happens is if you pull too tight, which is just classically what people do in error of any facelift, man, mm -hmm. woman, doesn't matter, is you get that swoop look where the corner of the mouth gets pulled, any dimple or animation of the cheek gets blunted and the side of the face gets flat. And that's not, that's not man or woman. That's just like, what does this look like if I'm pulling here? So when you combine those things, it all looks weird. So the reason why men, in my opinion, look weirder than women and why plastic surgery of men is more tricky than women is your error rate is smaller than in women. Why, why would he get filler in his lips, though? Because what happens is that a man's lip, like a woman's lip, starts to disappear. All aging, you brought up a good point. Lips also are part of the rejuvenation, but they're so subtle that you just need to give them a tiny amount of volume to be back to normal. A woman can have... Large lips, and arguably it could be attractive, even if they look like a duck. Like, it's not my taste, I need but this. she's probably still considered in the, in the realm of attractive. Mm -hmm. Men, zero, zero error rate. So that's why these guys that are get older, they have the pressure of looking young and whatever. They suddenly go from being like, because there's a sort of a vintage, rugged look to a man who doesn't, that looks older. But Absolutely. So at any rate, I think that that was an interesting uh, transition. So who's next? Well, for males, let's stay on it and go Wayne Newton. We've got him next. I don't even know what Wayne Newton, Newton, Newton looks like. He's uh, probably gonna, he looks like he's in front of a tobacco store. I think he's going to look. The, does he? I, I think he's probably going to look like Mickey Rourke if we look. Like no. Him. Oh gosh, no, no. He's way more closer to Kenny Rogers. Like there's a smooth weirdness to him. He looks like he's carved out of wood. Like it's a very unusual. I, I, it, arguably, he looks worse than Mickey Rourke. And okay. that's really going out on a limb. Okay, yeah. So, so I oh here is a photo. Okay, so I mean, it's 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 everything I just mentioned, right? 
times to one. A, to, to a greater extent, right? Which is, it's it, you can look at him. So his eyes, men, their eyes become beady. Beady, meaning, why does their eyes look so small? It's because they do a lower eyelid surgery. And when they do a lower eyelid surgery, they bring it together so that the eye space becomes smaller. So you get beady little eyes. Those are very beady. You understand? And when you have a huge face like that and your eyes are tiny, you don't look good. He looks like a gingerbread man. He <laughs> looks like he's got little raisin eyes. So, that, and so basically it's the same concept, right? Let's go over this again because this is all about- But he, he was never a handsome man. Our next person, Priscilla Presley, is heartbreaking because she was, Priscilla Presley- was arguably, I mean, look, Elvis married her and she continued to be beautiful, like through Naked Gun. And even now it's not that she's not beautiful. I, I don't, I'm not here to bash Priscilla Presley, but what she's done to herself is it's, it's not on the Kim Novak level. I mean, after the, I don't know if you remember after the last awards show season, pretty much the talk wasn't who won the award. It was, did you see Kim Novak's face? Okay. So Kim, so what, I'm sorry, um, uh, Pris, Pris, Priscilla Presley her, her biggest downfall, which is that this is another topic. So we have, what can you do to a face? What you can, can pull you do? it, you can fill it. Let's mm -hmm. be honest. Those are the two things you can do. If you really distill it down to like nuts and bolts, you can pull it or fill it. So, so it's stretch so, or plump. So, so it's either removing too much or filling too much. So the things we described on, for example, Mickey Rourke was too much being removed, too much being pulled, being too much, too much being done. In with women nowadays, all of a sudden, in the world of filler and sort of non-surgical fat and filler, which is a great tool, salt is not a problem. The problem is putting way too much salt. These people, and she's one of them, Priscilla, is that they've just they've just got that full face syndrome. I, they've just filled their face with so much filler and or fat. And so what happens is now it's another syndrome. That looks like a full baby diaper. Yeah. Like well, it looks, looks just white and lumpy. So what happens is... And the reason she was beautiful before oh. is she has a gorgeous facial structure. Gorgeous. Great bone structure. And what happened, and this is what happens to a lot of people, is you start to age naturally, right? Mm -hmm. Somewhere around 50-ish, some Watch earlier, yourself. some later. Watch yourself, you, Roddy. You start <laughs> noticing some loose skin, right? Mm -hmm. And the first trigger is, oh my God, what is this loose skin in my neck and my, around, my, around my lips? What are you the talking marionettes. about? Yeah, you, <laughs> you look great. Too bad the viewers can't see you as you pull your face so what do you do? So the question is what you do. Uh -huh. You have three options. Are you ready? Uh-huh. Option one. Say, well, F it. This is what I look like. I look great and age so-called gracefully. I think that's Helen Mirren. I think Helen Mirren gave us the awesome. F it. She looks amazing. Awesome. If that's your choice, awesome. Next thing is, oh my God, look at this loose skin around my face. Holy crap. I got to go see someone. And you go see someone. They said, listen, you need some kind of facelift or mini, mini lift or whatever, which is surgery and cutting. Right. Okay. And then we've discussed that can be done right or can be done excessive. Or the third and new option is, oh my God, there's no way I'm having no facelift. Hell no. I'm just going to have something minimally invasive done, which is what? Filler, 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 fat, filler, filler, fat. And what it does is in a small amount, it buys you time. You have this loose skin and you go in and you go to your favorite spa and they fill you with some Restylane or Juvederm and you walk out going, hmm. That looks pretty goddamn good because mm -hmm. the extra skin has been filled up. Then three, six months goes by and you're like, oh shit, it's starting again. And you go back and what do you do? You fill some more and you fill some more and you fill some more. And then before you know it, you have this syndrome. You look like a koi. A koi is all this jaw, your whole jaw area, super wide and filled and bizarre looking. And this is her. And so people don't walk in and get 18 syringes. People walk in and get one, then two, and then they get hooked because they've already gone down that route. Do you think her face is this wide and this plump and this full over one session? It's this, this, I got to feel a little bit more and I got to, and who's responsible? Well, who's, me, who's responsible for her face? Her or the doctor? A hundred percent it's a doctor. I've said this a thousand times. Really? hundred percent it's her doctor. If a child walks in and says, mommy, mommy, I'm hungry. Give me five cookies. Do you blame the child for wanting five cookies? Do you blame a celebrity or a woman or a man who wants to look better? You blame the person who gave the kid. Ob child obesity is a parent's problem. No child walks up to a vending machine, pulls out their credit card and buys food. That's shitty. 
the parent fed them and the person who did this to her is the spa or the doctor or the greedy, grimy people who want to make money because she's a celebrity and comes in. So nobody becomes like this without an assailant. So I, I, how do people age gracefully then? You're saying there's two ways. You either cut or you do the injectables. Is there a happy balance Of course. That you can so the it? answer is, okay, everyone's listening saying, okay, you, so basically I'm listening to this plastic surgery podcast and you're basically telling me the answer is don't touch yourself. Yeah. Not at all. And we're going to do in the second segment, we're going to talk about people who got it right. You only notice the people who look like crap at the party. I call this selection bias. What is selection bias? So this notion that I went to this party last night and you cannot believe how crazy people look. Oh my God, honey, everyone looks like a freak. So I went to a party and there was a hundred people at that party and there were six women or men, doesn't matter, that look psycho like psychos. <laughs> so you go home and you're like, the answer is, oh my God, plastic surgery has to look that way. So that's not true. Out of 100 people, 30 people had plastic surgery. Five of them look like Probably freaks. Probably more. <laughs> so the answer is that you only recognize the ones that look bad. You don't recognize the one that looks good. So in your calculations, you say five out of a five out of five people who had plastic surgery look bad. When the reality, it's five out of 50 because you don't know the other, other 45. So in our next segment, I'm going to tell you by looking at people who did it right, how to do it in a way that is... Not you don't have to be black or white. How's that? Sounds I think good. that's a great segment. You gonna okay. stick around, Marissa? Yeah. She has good. No choice. We got her clawed and we got that's her trapped it. in. We're here. keeping her. Okay. Thank you for listening to Plastic Surgery Uncensored. Please keep listening. Our next segment is going to be Who Got It Right with Celebrity Plastic Surgery. We're back on Plastic Surgery Uncensored. And in this segment, we're gonna talk about celebrity plastic surgery with our guest, Marissa Montgomery, who is a Hollywood insider, and uh, I like to say red carpet presenter. Is that a good? Is that a good way that of? Sounds just about right. Okay, yeah. that's you. That's who you are. And we're going to talk about people that got it right this time. Uh, Doctor Raban wants to start at the top with Cher. Okay, so listen. So again, who got it right? Who got it wrong? It's a matter of personal taste, right? Mm -hmm. Some people may argue that some of the people we spoke about in the last segment look fantastic. I'm not here to bash anybody. And some people may think some of the people we're mentioning now are going to be like, oh, she looks terrible. But I think we're talking about for the general, for most people. Most people would say that overall, Cher looks pretty damn good. She's, right? she's 73, I think. 70. Yeah, she's 73. And for 73, and there's unarguable that she's had plastic surgery, she looks pretty good. So what, and your, and your question was right on the money. Because you, you, you have that sentiment that most people do, which is, I don't want to age gracefully because I don't know necessarily that, that what, why. At the same time, <laughs> I don't want to look freakish. So what, what the hell do I do? And that's the purpose of our dialogue. Yeah, is there a happy medium Of somewhere? course there is. Of course, and Cher represents that and Jane Fonda. And let's we'll go through this. Let's get a picture of Cher. I can't here see here you her. go. Let's, 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 this is a good, this is a good one. I think it's pretty reasonable. I don't think yeah. she, right? You're looking at that. So tell me when you look at Cher at 73, what she do you think? She looks Fantastic. Okay, what to you makes her look fantastic? Because fantastic is general. So you're a critical red carpet. You see, describe her, her now look. Well, you know, I just love Cher as a person. So maybe I, you know, listen, well, I just think look at her features. You know, whatever she did to her nose, it's a strong nose and she still owns it. And I like, you know, it's, it's true to who she is. I mean, obviously she, you can see she's had a lot of things done. Her lips, her nose, her. But, but the key to it is, at the end of the day, what you're asking is, what differentiates that from the last one we saw, a Mickey Rourke or someone, what differentiates The, the subtle nuances. That's exactly yeah. it. It's the degree, the extent in which you do things. I've said this thousands and thousands of times. This is my analogy. The issue is not plastic surgery, as is not the issue salt. When you are a world-renowned chef and you're making some of the most exquisite food in the world. You use salt, but you use it in the right amount. If you were a novice chef and you use the same recipe and just use just a little too much salt in that recipe than it calls for, that food tastes like shit. <laughs> so what is it? Is it that salt is bad? We should remove it? Some of the best cake in the world has salt in it. It's not the salt. It's the chef. It's not that it shouldn't be, you shouldn't have your nose done. You shouldn't have a facelift. Don't take eyelid skin out. It's to what extent? And that is why I keep repeatedly saying, find the best chef. Yeah. 
don't we'll just fine tune what is already there. Correct. So, so why does face. share look great? So let's go through share. So at some juncture, probably share's probably had two facelifts. Okay. You think there are only two? Correct. Because she probably started in her late fifties. When if, is a good age to have a facelift? You start having your facelift when you look in the mirror and you're like, wow, I hate this. So, and it's, so that usually occurs for most people, realistically, probably like 58, 59, 61, 62. Could it happen to you at 55? Maybe. Could you wait till you're 65? Maybe. But most people at their late 50s, early 60s, get to a point where they can't tolerate the jowls anymore. Their neck skin is in excess. They don't like, they don't see the, per in the they feel young, but the person in the mirror isn't young. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Cher probably had her first facelift in her late 50s, early 60s. And whoever did her facelift did it in an extent not to hit it out of the park, but rather do it in a way where she was just slightly tightened and her neck skin was was removed, but she didn't like you didn't hit it out of the park, if that makes any sense, which ironically means you hit it out of the park. They didn't remove a ton of eyelid skin, but remove just enough to bring her back five years or eight years. They lifted her brows just subtly. They may have added volume. You know me, I'm a rhinoplasty expert. Rhinoplasty is not about age, it's about balance. That's the one thing that's not an age-related thing. And all they did was make her nose a little more balanced. Didn't give her some little, cher has got a big face, dark features. She's got some masculine appearance to her, which is attractive. And you have to have a large nose for that face. Had Cher done this little Mickey, Mickey Mouse nose that is often done, she'd look immediately ridiculous. So when she did that in her late 50s and right around probably her late 60s, she probably was in, needed a little tune-up. And what did she do? She went and did it yet again, whatever parts needed it, just a slight amount. And so the subtleties of the things she did allowed her to continuously look just fresh. And that is the key to your question. Should I get filler? I don't know. Everyone I know looks so weird. Yeah, sure. Why not? You just need like half a syringe. I know everyone that gets Botox looks frozen. What the hell? No, that's not the case at all. Just put a little less. I put in Botox one half the average amount. I gave it a name just for the hell of it. I call it micro Botox because people love names. You they know do. Me, you they know do. me and names like mini facelift. Oh, yeah. Micro Botox. Oh, my God. My doctor, he is me. It's a thing. Which means like I give you like half the dose. So it doesn't last as long. You need to do it more often, but you look the bomb all the time. So less is really always more when it comes to doing any of these treatments. You got it. But who determines that? The doctor, because the you're the expert. The goddamn yeah. chef. <laughs> I keep bringing it back home. The guy who does it. So does it matter that if your chef has 60,000 followers on Instagram? Does it matter that your chef was endorsed by, by, by Bella Hadid? Does it matter? None of this matters. What matters is that your chef consistently and reproducibly has amazing results. But do people sometimes come and they actually want that look yes. being done? Yes, they do. And then do you say, who's, I won't do Whose that. fault is it that they do it? The chef. Again, you are a professional with integrity and you have responsibility. We are not Uber drivers. We are not Uber. You know what an Uber driver is? You get in the car and you say, I want to drive to X destination. Take me there, please. I don't ask questions. I don't care. I'm your driver. So if a patient comes in, as they do constantly, and say, hey, Dr. Bond, I want to do blah, 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 some of which is because they don't know any better, and some of which because they have a skewed sense of self from Instagram or wherever the hell, it is my responsibility, my job, to say no. Just like the girl who came in yesterday who wanted liposuction, and she, she brought me a picture, wanted the big booty thing, the whole shebang, literally yesterday, and I said, yes to the belly, yes to this, and hell no to this. And you know what she said? Okay, I see what you're saying. And of the people that come in and ask for something crazy, 90% of them can easily be walked off of the plank when you are you spend time with them. A small minority Which brings are me to like, a question. truly like, crazy. Yeah. Which brings me to a question. I, I agree with you that the integrity of the doctor has a lot to do with it with Dr. Raban, but... How, how do you, do you think, and, and it's not a rhetorical question, when, when Priscilla Presley looks in the mirror, when these people that have had this stuff done look at themselves, do they really not see that it's not flattering? Like what happens psychologically so where you go in a, for the 18th syringe load so, of- So what we're going to do is that's a phenomenal question, phenomenal, because it, it really hits the driving point is what drives people. But we're going to save it for our segment on 
body dysmorphia. Okay. And the psychology and the driving force between all of us. Not just people who look weird, but what drives us to look in the mirror and say... But hmm. celebrities have it worse, I they think. They do, and we'll talk about that. And I'll touch on it just briefly. It's the fact that it's a slow and gradual process, the same way that people stay in relationship with abusive husbands and abusive partners. And you're like, do they not know that there's like other... It's this gradual, slow kind of current that takes you. You go out to the ocean, and the next thing you know, you're like two miles offshore. Wow. It didn't, you didn't get hit by a wave. You just drifted. And we'll talk about that on that segment. So that's a great segue for the other one. So let's take a next, let's talk about the next celebrity that got it right. Can Where I that, just, I just yeah, 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 yeah. ask you, Go is ahead. there any way back? So if Lisa Marie Presley comes to you or Bill Kim, is there anything you can do in a situation like that? If that comes to you, what would you do? So it depends on what they've done. Luckily, some of the things that people are doing on the filling size, like I'll see patients every once in a while. You you can tell by my personality. I'm pretty. I don't. I'm pretty direct. So they'll come in and be like, "No holds back." Right, right. They'll come in. I'm like, "Hi, Doctor Ron. How are you? I just don't like the way I look." And I'm here for like a brow lift. And I'll look at their face, and they look literally like a blowfish. <laughs> and they haven't mentioned it yet. And I'll say, "Well, the first thing we can do is let's talk about the fact that your face is way overfilled. Let's take the mirror and do you think this looks good?" And then right at that moment, nine out of ten patients, when I hold them the mirror in front of them and I hold them accountable, say. No, not really. I don't really love the face stuff. So at that point, if it's filler related, I actually reverse it. I physically go get an enzyme out of the refrigerator and I start and they're panic struck in. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh no, it's my face. Can I look that old way? I'm like, yeah, you mean like look normal? Yeah, we can get you back to normal. So you can actually And I do reverse that. the filler if the problem you had is overfilling. If the problem you had is too much fat put in your face, because we do that now. You're screwed. You own it. Your fat face. And by the way, if you gain weight, your fat gets your face gets twice as fat as it normally would because the fat's from your stomach. Oh my gosh. If the issue is you remove too much skin from your eyelids, your brow, or your face, you're screwed. All the more reason why we're having this podcast. So much of what you've done is irreversible. Mm -hmm. And there's this philosophy that we have in today's public. So the fat doesn't get absorbed, Dr. Rabon? Some of it does. But your... No, listen, when you get fat transferred to your face, your butt, your breast, half of it survives and half of it dies. This half that stays is yours. You own it. It stays. And if you gain weight, it triples in, in size wow. way faster. If you gain 100 pounds right I've now. I've never heard this before. Oh, con there's tons and tons of people. If Normally, if you gain weight, your face gains weight as your, your face gains weight. But when you get fat transfer and you gain weight, your face gains weight three times faster because it's fat from your belly. Wow. So the reason why we, you know, we're in this generation of I'll do it, I'll deal with it later. Mm -hmm. Like, what are you going to do with all these tattoos all over your entire body? Instant it's gratification. It's cool. I don't mind. Whatever. But when you're 68, and you might outgrow it, but you, I'll just remove it. I'll laser it. Okay, well, maybe, maybe not. So we having this dialogue because you, we've shifted from the generation of always worrying about the future and not living in the present, to the present, never worrying about the future. So let's talk about the next candidate, which I think looks probably my favorite of all of them is Jane Fonda. Oh, love her. Classy, classic beauty. I think it's not, it's not just a testament to her plastic surgeon. It has to do with this duality of her and her plastic surgeon, her needs, her wants. She was gorgeous before. She looks gorgeous today. Some will argue she looks even more beautiful, which is hard to imagine. And, you know, Jane Fonda, I'm 77, right? I think she's older than that now. No, late. I think she might. No, that was in, that was in two, she's 80. Yeah, a, yeah, exactly. And so the reason is it, it goes back to that balance. She didn't age gracefully, which you can, nothing against it. You, you look beautiful. But she aged at her pace, wanted to look good, just like you put on makeup, just like you dye your, your grays, just like you fix your nails. And her and her plastic surgeon dialed it in just right. And she's probably also had two facelifts and she did them at the right time. She did it at the right amount. She removed just enough to clean up what happened, but not go overboard. She filled her face in places where she's lost volume just enough to fill in where she was and always looked graceful. It isn't, oh my God, but Jane Fonda, I mean, look at her. She's just but, but blessed. Look, as somebody no. who in my, I have in my keepsake box, Jane Fonda leg warmers, uh, she was an advocate of keeping everything intact so a question because celebrities frequently eat better than we do they work out more than we do they have their own trainers like there's a whole connection there with her of 
like you say, wanting to match. Like she feels young. I'm sure she's still very physically fit. So she wanted her face to match her body. But how much does that play into if somebody has actually taken care of all of it? Like uh, a of holistic approach. Listen, listen, at the end of the day, we're just, we, we basically extracted this little conversation. But it doesn't. Listen, if you show up in my office and you're 78 and you're... 183 pounds, oh, five foot three. I didn't want to be it's sound gonna, catty, no, but no, there no. is a lot. And you smoke three packs a day. You're diabetic and have hypertension. And you come in my office and you're five foot three, not that weight in and of itself, but healthy and eat well. Of course you're going to look better. I mean, that's a no brainer. I mean, w- it, the fact that we have this dialogue today is, is, is pretty sad because it, it's It like, isn't a no brainer. That's it, the problem. People look at pictures and think they can have the same result where she had a life a right, lifetime right, of right. getting to that point. Of course. But they, they think but, you but, can do but, it in but, an afternoon. But what we're talking about today is not so much why is she a great candidate, but rather what did she do to maintain her candidacy? Of course. So yes, of course, as always, we can talk about people, what makes them great candidate. But today we're talking about, okay, you show up and you're a good candidate. You did your part. Right. Can you do it and look great? Or can mm-hmm. you do it and look freakish? And that's our goal is how to dial it in. And then, and the last one of the our, our, of our of our trio is, is Sharon Osborne, who just recently said she's going in for her fourth fourth facelift. Or that's something. a lot, isn't it? For that, it doesn't matter. It's not a lot because imagine it, it's not the number; it's okay. the extent. You can do one one facelift in your sixties and forever be ruined, and take off an inch of skin. I'm making it up. Or you can do four plastic surgeries and take a half of a centimeter every time and still end up looking greater than you did the one time. It's not how, it's not what you do, it's how much of it you do. She looks fabulous. She, she looks does. better she looks now fantastic. than she used to. Okay, because because she and her surgeon, because remember, this is a collaborative effort, decided on a goal that was realistic and they hit it. So all the power to them. So shall we get to the honorable mentions? Yeah. Okay, so the honorable mentions are people who have done things that I think look good, but maybe not as good. One of them, of course, is the most famous person on the planet today is Bella Hadid. Mm. Everybody's talking about Bella Hadid. She looks totally different than when she first came on the scene. Okay, so so if you look at her before and after, it's unarguable. She she, She was definitely no supermodel. And she definitely was never going to be a brand ambassador. I think ambassador. her sister's prettier. She was never going to be a brand brand ambassador before she had plastic surgery. So the question is, what did she do? And the thing she's done for sure, she had a brow lift, which are, is like a brow lift. Well, you just said that when you're... So there's a brow lift for when you age and there's a brow lift for when you're young, but I don't like the shape of my brow. So she didn't need a brow lift because she was... 22 or something, whatever maybe she was. Her brow was low. But she had a little bit of a low shaped brow. And now if you look at her, she looks at like, like ponytail, like we call it a ponytail look. And she had some, somebody named it ponytail brow lift. This is cockamamie names. But the bottom <laughs> line is that she went and did surgically what people do with tattooing and pencil. She raised the arch of her brow, which it looks desirable. So she did that. And we could say that part of it looked good. Should she have done it at 22? She was young. I'm not going to get into the ethics of it. We're here to talk about looks good, doesn't look good. Right. The second thing she did is she did her nose. And in my humble opinion, and I'm, this is my, this is my wheelhouse. This is my favorite thing in the world. Nose is her like nose, while it looks more petite and it looks more refined and every woman looks better and man to a certain degree, it's overdone for me. And look, look at this. I'm going to show you her, her nose. Now look. Look at her nose really critically. Don't look at her face and how beautiful her eyes are and her cheek structure. She is very pretty. Look at her nose and what do you see? Now, this is the after. This is her after. Look at her nose. Look at all the little points. Yeah. To me, as a nose specialist, her nose looks skeletonized. You can see every little aspect of it. Now, mind you, mind you, Uh she just had her nose done a few years ago. And so as she ages... Her nose will classically Smooth do. Out. No, no, will get a thousand times worse. Oh, It'll really? get more and more dimpled and more and more collapsed It'll cave? and more and more caved and more and more Ooh. narrow. So I think the Bella Hadid honorable mention is perhaps some of the things she did have obviously made her gorgeous. But I think if you wait and watch carefully, I think she'll, at some point, you'll see her nose either she'll undergo a revision or she'll do filler because I think her nose was overdone. Most of the photos of her, not celeb, not paparazzi photos, are airbrushed. So when she's a brand ambassador for Lacoste or look whatever, those are all airbrushed. But if you catch her in the right paparazzi photo, which can't, you know, that is just her, you'll see her nose looks a Candid. little skele- skeletonized. Do you see what I'm talking about? Yeah. Do you, do you, what do you think? I mean, I think she was a beautiful girl before. I think she's a beautiful girl now. It's very hard to 
it's a, but, but it's a different beauty. Let's just, we're just trying to be, we're here to be critical. We're not mm -hmm. here to, we, obviously she's a fantastic human being. I'm, I'm not one way or the other. And it's not our- I see what you say, skeletonized, and that there was a fullness to her old nose. But I, I, think, I think also that fullness is sort of, for lack of a better term, childlike. It's youthful. I think when you do make it thinner and remove the fat or fullness to the nose, I think it's aging. Well, we'll see. I mean, there's no question that, you know, the filler she's put in her cheeks has aged her. She looks more mature. Is it true that your nose keeps growing throughout your life? Yeah, cartilage grows, ears grow, noses grow. If you look at, you know, your pictures of your your grandparents. So despite even doing a nose job at such a young age, actually your nose could grow. It's in totally different. There's the natural nose and then there's the done nose. The natural nose, if you don't touch your nose and do nothing to mm -hmm. it, you have a very pretty nose. Thank you. As time goes on, your nose will change and grow a little bit. If you've touched your nose and operate on it, all bets are off. Your nose tends to get more and more narrow and collapse because the scar tissue in your nose never ends. And you'll go, if you look at IMDB, because when patients come in for rhinoplasty, I take them through the journey of celebrities because mm -hmm. we have it here. Before they had their nose jobs, right after their nose jobs, and 10 to 15 years down the line in their careers. And you're like, oh my God, I've never, why does our nose look like that? It's because you don't pay attention because they're celebrities and you just see Photoshop photos of them all the time. So the idea isn't that your nose should look, doesn't look better, a little narrower or a little more refined. The question is to what extent? The other honorable mention was... Um, Kylie Kardashian. Kylie. So here's the whole lip, lip phenomena. Kylie yeah. Kardashian, if you look at her photos... So what did she do? I never understand. What did she do with the okay. lips? And then she took them out. And then so it's no, hers in. is very easy. She is a classic young girl who was not blessed with full lips. Okay. So for example, my wife's been everywhere she goes. People think she had her lips done. She just has really big lips. Mm -hmm. So now you born with kind of really average lips, fine, or even maybe narrow lips. And you just go get filler in your lip. And you do it, if you do it correctly and you do it incrementally, your lips tend to grow and get a little bigger and a little bigger and a little bigger. And then if you maintain that filler over time, you then, if you look at her before and after of her lips, her lips made a huge, and she had her nose done. Her lips- She and, looks very different. No, and she, and she looks beautiful and good. The issue is that for discussion, so her lips aren't hers. The filler worked in her instance, and then she made a billion dollars off of lip kits. Wait, so is that literally just filler? Because I don't know, there were all these rumors that she actually had something like in, implanted, implanted in them. So let's just, lip enhancement. What are the mm -hmm. ways to do it? Yeah. You can fill it with filler, easiest, quickest, most benign way. And if it's done correctly, right back to what we said, incrementally and in decent proportions, it can look great. Yeah. You can add fat, which I think in the world now that we have filler, why would you add fat? Because what if you don't like the fat? What if it's lumpy? It's never going away. You can add things that people did in the past, which is silicone and crap like that. And that's yeah. Rene. No, what was the girl? Lisa Rena, didn't Lisa Rena, like which will be our last one. Yeah. Which is you can add it and it'll destroy your lips. Never do that. Or you can get this new thing called the lip lift, which, we, which is this idea where you actually cut the upper part of your lip where it connects to your nose and rotate your lip out. And there's a whole controversy as to whether or not that's a good idea or not. But thousands of young girls are doing that. It was really designed for older women because your lips start to get low and long. Do you do that? So I, do I don't. I only do it in. If you come into me as a young girl and you're 26 and you want fuller lips and you want a lip lift, I'm not going to do it. But that's a matter of my own personal opinion. There are lots of surgeons that do. If you're a 63-year-old woman and your lip has gotten much longer and it's kind of sagging, I'll do it. Because whereas filler is reversible, the lip lift really changes the dynamics of your animation. So people who have had the lip lift, when they talk and smile, and you can see hundreds of videos online, they just don't look normal. Whether that you like that look or not, I don't know. So, so in her instance, she did her nose, she did some cheek filler, and, and she did her, and she did her lips. And the thing that's interesting is she made a billion dollars off her lips oh, and okay. then reversed it and was kind of like, I don't believe in, you know, and whatever. So that's, there's, that's a matter of the whole controversy about Beyonce doing hair products when it's not her hair. I don't have a problem with anyone doing anything so long as they're transparent. That's my pet peeve in the world. I embrace it all. I'm a plastic surgeon for God's sakes. I love transformations. I love making you look better. I don't care. I don't have a problem with that. And patients have constantly asked me like, I don't know how to tell this. What, what, my friends, what if they ask? I'm like, what if they ask? Tell them, hell yeah. 
Yeah. I did my ear pinning. I'm excited. Don't you know? Like own it and be be proud of it. So you don't think that the her look as was a result of using her own product is what we're getting down to. The is lip it's, kit? Yeah. It's not no, the lip kit is some. Your... No, 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 no. Listen, you cannot change your lips using a lip kit. You can, you can, you can use liner to make it bigger. You can use different products. You can put that. There's all kinds of stuff like that have peppermint in them that kind of make your lips plump for the evening. Like you just like had a lot of chili pepper. I've got one of those in my handbag right now. I want to just know who is the number one celebrity person people bring in and ask you day after day. That is who I want to look like. For what body part? Right? <laughs> right, right, right. Let's do face because we're on the matter of face. Face? Kim K. I got a lot of Kim K's. I think, I, and, I, and by the way, I don't necessarily know that this is because they're the most beautiful. Like they are the beauty icon. I think they're the most seen. Mm-hmm. So the reality is that if you just, you as a person who knows celebrity presence, it's, a, it's who's got the best PR and who has the best exposure. Mm-hmm. And Kim K is unarguably the queen of exposure, good, bad, or ugly. And so Kim K comes in all the time for noses. And I do agree. I think her face and her nose are very beautiful. Mm-hmm. No one will take that away from her. So noses, I get a lot of Kim K. Um, unfortunately for bo- bodies, we get a lot of Kim K's. People aren't coming in saying, I want to be skinny. People are coming in saying, I want to be curvy. So has Kim K kind of changed your whole business model now? People are really coming in like for butt things that they were never coming in for before. Maybe it was, you know, boobs back in a different area. But Correct. Now- it was Pamela Anderson who changed the dial for breast on Baywatch. Mm-hmm. There was this notion that, oh my God, big 90s California breasts were in, which have shifted now greatly. Big California butts. Correct. And so, of course, there are always going to be icons. And this isn't new to our generation. It's new, not new. Uh, you know, Mona Lisa had her contribution. I'm saying Cleopatra all the time had yeah. her contribution. There's Marilyn always Monroe, Marilyn always, Monroe. Yeah. There's beauty icons that do it and just happens to be whoever's, whoever's the most seen is the one that people will follow, mm-hmm. right? Kim K happened to do it with her you know, with her butt and all that stuff. And that's the current thing. And then, and then, and then there's, there's little Kim and, and well, even Joan from Mad Men for a while. I read when Mad Men was the rage, everybody was going for the big, I, I, I think that for example, I think that, um, and Angelina jo- Jolie was for a period of time, maybe a generation prior, a beauty icon still is gorgeous and beautiful. I think that she's blessed. And I think that, I think with the exception of her nose, the rest of hers, I do believe, is mostly hers. I mean, you never know. But I mean, she had those lips as a child if you no, see old would, pictures. And no. her dad had those right. lips in Midnight Cowboy. No, and, and if you look, I mean, she just has, she's just beautiful. She's gorgeous. And I think if you notice, she's maintained that beauty in her own way. Does she Botox? Does she do some filler? That's like, does she color her roots? Does she get nails done? That's not an issue. But overall, she's maintained it and she's w- w- been able to, to, to hold on to that image. But she's also not in the Instagram, she's, she's, she's a class above that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I, and I, and I think that that that's, this is, this is why we're in this, this discussion. I think it's interesting. You should say that and we'll wrap it up. There's so much to say on this. When you said Angelina is a class above this, it's not just generational. Let's talk about sort of a listers versus sort of this, this B set because young girls, 15, 16, 17 year old girls are not influenced by the beauty of a Julianne Moore, Angelina Jolie, Kate Winslet, you and I were talking about on the way over. They're influenced by the Instagrammer people, by what I would call the the B team. And, and even though their, their presence isn't, as you would say, you know, they're not Oscar winning top tier. They are the ones that the kids are one completely enamored of. 100%. Yeah, you have to look at the front covers of magazines now. It's no longer actresses. It's I don't even know actresses. half of them. Yeah. So, so that, that is the reason why there has to be, there has to be a counterbalance, a counter dialogue, someone who is helping patrol and be a whistleblower. Again. Because you see what happened is before beauty was funneled through more controlled channels control channels instagram is the wild west There's interest no... int- instagram and the fact that every single person has their own platform yep. and can manipulate their images in any way they want and get to the consumer and bypass producers editors photographers so you don't regulate you don't have any checkpoints mm-hmm. and no one can stop you and no one can say otherwise and the fact is between 
between the, the influencer and your 16 year old child, there is nothing in between that airspace. No. And so before there was like, there was the editor of the magazine, there was the photographer, there was the model, there was the model's agent. Highly was, regulated gatekeepers. So now it's just a girl sitting in her house with a camera who wants to be an influencer, who wants to collect on, you know, thousands and followers. And this poor 16 year old girl who's on her phone because that's what is now the norm. And there's this connection that occurs that is destroying and eroding the minds of these children. Yeah, it's and creating. No a one cares that Angelina Jolie is gorgeous and classy and is like a, a she's a she's a uh, poster child for UNICEF. Like no one gives a shit because my niece who's 16 doesn't see that person. And so we get together not just to talk because it's interesting, but to create the dialogue. And at the end of the day, maybe those 16 year old people are, or aren't listening to this podcast, but certainly the people who love them are right. So they're sisters, the people that are driving them to the doctors and their, <laughs> and their, and their parents and their, so what would you say? You would say, wait, like to someone that was, no, like, of- I don't think it's the waiting. I do rhinoplasties on 60. I did my mm-hmm. niece's rhinoplasty at 17. She's mature. She's well adjusted. She's grounded. She's an amazing young girl in college. She's kicking ass. It's not an age thing. It's a mind. It's a balance. It's a dialogue. It isn't plastic surgery is evil. It's bad. It's good. It's we don't have discussions. We're not invested in each other. And what has happened is the channels. We used to go A to B to C to D to E. Now we're going A to E. And in that A to E dialogue, everyone is being bypassed. So that girl who is in wherever who is in Vegas or in whatever, is doing her photos every day, who's manipulating either V clothing or makeup or Facetune, is reaching out to hundreds and thousands of influential young girls and guys. And we're, we're creating this morphed sense of self, which is creating a, an incredible amount of anxiety, depression, drug addiction. Because the truth of the matter is when you're 16, all you want to do is be liked... Be, be fit in and, and, and be desired. Mm -hmm. And your only, your only measure is what's currently popular. The music, the culture, the, the, so that's the problem. And so you are disconnected as the loved ones from this person. You, you think you're having dialogues with them, but you and I both know that when you're at, on your vacation, your, your sister or your cousin is looking at their phone and their brain is being morphed and you spend 10 minutes, an hour with them, and then the rest of the time, my, they're just in that world. My nieces are easily influenced. I have five social media platforms. They have no idea I spy on them. They think I'm a light-skinned brother with blue eyes from Oakland. So anyways, I'm, I'm <laughs> so, we're so happy that you came. Yay, Thank Marissa. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and, I, and I hope that we, we, I mean, we're going to just keep, the, we're just going to keep doing our part here. And where can our listeners find you, Marissa? Uh, on my Instagram, at Marissa Montgomery. Yeah, you have a bunch of followers. You're one of those people that, and and you're fighting the good fight because you're normal. Oh, I don't know how normal I am. You have you haven't had anything. It's fascinating. You're normally ab, you're 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 ab, what is you're normal? abnorm <laughs> you're ab you're abnormally normal. Yeah, abnormal is nothing other than just being human, but it's within the scope of of reasonableness. We're always talking about fringes. We're never talking about absolutes. So we're, we were we were very happy to have you today. Thank, thank you. you, and and thank you guys. Thanks for joining us and. Honestly, if there's something we loved reading the letters at the top, something you want us to talk about, a question you want to ask, please do that. You have listened to a fabulous segment. I'm going to say that because you were on it of plastic surgery uncensored. Thank you for joining us.